What is up guys, Andy Forrest, Team Runner here, and welcome back to another video. And today we're talking all about the Nike Zoom Fly 5, and is this the most misunderstood shoe of 2022? So having now completed all my testing in the Zoom Fly 5, I've actually put three workouts in this shoe and indeed a two and a half hour long run. I want to share with you why I think this shoe is possibly the most misunderstood shoe of 2022. What we'll do today is we'll go through what those workouts were, how the shoe performed, we'll talk about the long run, go through all of that and then I'll give you my final thoughts at the end as to why I think this shoe is better than some people make it out to be. If you're excited for today guys, please do give this video a like, share it with your friends subscribe to the channel for weekly running content and we'll start with the workouts So obviously the first workout I did in this shoe was on the first impressions video and that was starting slower than marathon pace, working at marathon pace and working slightly faster. And that's great because this is the training partner to the Vaporfly so I want to be able to run in this, feel something similar to the Vaporfly but not have the benefits of the lightweight nature of the Vaporfly and the poppiness but something as smooth as the Vaporfly and this certainly ticks that box. So it did really really well in that workout but the key for me was going to be to take this out on two more workouts later in the week. So I used this shoe on both my double threshold runs. You can check those workouts out in my previous week three, I think it was, London Marathon training vlog. I go into more detail, you can see how they performed there. But I have to say, I was extremely impressed on both the workouts. So start with the morning one first. It was three by 10 minutes with two minutes jog recovery. And that was kind of a, a sub threshold effort, kind of relaxed, controlled, but quite hard. And it felt really good. Clocking off some good paces, feeling smooth doing it nice and relatively low heart rate and just feeling good just that i just i can't this shoe is buttery smooth and i think if anyone said to me how would you describe it that's how i describe the shoe buttery smooth it's just a lovely like the vaporfly is quite an aggressive shoe when you're running in it you feel like you're racing in quite an aggressive shoe this is kind of that but toned back and just a lot more smooth through the foot strike it's just such a, a lovely roll through motion that i get in this shoe so that morning workout went really, really well and I could not grumble. I was really excited actually when I finished it. I looked at the stats, I was like, wow, I felt good doing it, but this shoe really, really helped along the way. And then I moved on to the evening workout, which was eight by a K. And that was very interesting because I actually went way too fast in that workout and I ended up suffering a little bit in the sixth and seventh rep, but pulled it back in the final eighth rep. But overall, again, just the nature of this shoe, I just felt like I could go fast and that's so counterintuitive when you think about how heavy this shoe is. This is one of the heaviest shoes I have in my size, 388 grams. It's humongous, but I'm really starting to notice that weight is just not everything. It just does not feel heavy when I'm running at those sorts of paces. And that was my concern with this shoe. Would it be able to pick up the pace? Would it be able to handle the faster stuff? And I can certainly say that I clocked some of the fastest K rep times on tired legs using this shoe. And then I move on to the long run. I took it out on the weekend for a long run and I knew that I wanted to get two and a half hours done. So I wanted to go out there and as I, as you can see, this is a road shoe, so I had to take it on predominantly roads. There was a few miles of a very light buffed out trail in there, but I did do my usual kind of six or 10K uh, loop plus a little loop tacked onto it. And what I tried to do with that long run was just to progress things as each loop went past and just see how it felt because what I started to feel in the Alpha Fly 2 when I was testing that shoe was towards the end like the hills felt a real slog and I actually reversed the route this time so although I had slightly more down longer downs in the loop I had more sharper ups than I did in the way round that I did with the Alpha Fly and the reason I did that was actually to see towards the end in the final loop how would I feel using this shoe would it feel as cumbersome going up a hill as the Alpha Fly 2 does and it didn't I just absolutely flew like a rocket at some of the lowest heart rate data I've ever seen so I ran I think it was 637 or 38 per mile something like that 148 beats a minute so to run that sort of pace at sub 150 beats a minute is absolutely insane. And I knew as I was running in this shoe, I could just feel the efficiency ooze out of this thing. I felt good, as I keep saying, through the gait cycle, landing, toe off, roll off, just, just everything about this shoe was absolutely great. And again, 
completely after a few miles the weight completely just left my mind and all I felt like I was just ticking off the miles just going and going and going now as I said what I wanted to do was try and progress each loop as I went and although I didn't quite have the energy to really kick on in the third loop I did manage to progress each loop very slightly and I did manage to finish as fast as possible and uh, yeah I've got to say two and a half hours in this shoe no blisters no hot spots absolutely perfect performance and I felt absolutely great So let's now ask that question, is this the most misunderstood shoe of 2022? Well, let me plant the seed so that you guys can understand why I'm asking this question and then let me explain why I think that this could be the most misunderstood shoe of 2022. So when this thing was marketed, we all got mega excited. Zoom X in the midsole, wow, this is going to be effectively what the Saucony Endorphin Speed is to the pro, a lightweight, exciting shoe. Now, I think when we all got it, and we saw the weight of the shoe and those initial impressions came out everyone oh my goodness it's a brick it's it's heavy it's cumbersome it's not uh what we've been told or thought it was going to be and i think that's just classic marketing you know we were told it's going to have zoom x it's got zoom x but what they didn't tell us is it was going to be encapsulated within a carrier foam which is going to add weight the width of the shoe in general has been widened so there's more volume there's more midsole there um, to make the shoe more stable and I think the whole bulk of the bottom half of the shoe, because not the top half, this is very lightweight, lovely upper, everything's good here, but basically the weight is all down here. And I think a lot of us just went, oh, I can't believe it. They've made another really heavy shoe. And for me, you know, I've complained on a multitude of occasions about Nike shoes being way too heavy, but I do feel this one breaks the mold and I do feel like it's a step in the right direction. I just hope to goodness that over the next two or three versions, they are able to bring the weight down slightly because let's be honest with you, I don't mind if it's a little bit weighty, but this is excessively heavy. However, however, what they've done with this shoe, the geometry, the curvature of the plate, the, the midsole, the structure, just everything about it, in my opinion, they've got spot on. We just need to somehow shed some of this weight. So I think in terms of how it was misunderstood, I think a lot of us thought, oh, we're gonna get a really lightweight training shoe, which we're gonna be able to clock some really long tempo miles in, feel great, feel really well recovered, and this shoe does all of that. I think this is why it's misunderstood because so many of us have gone, I think it's gonna be this. Oh wait, it's really heavy, so it can't possibly be this because that's really annoying that they've made it really heavy. But actually, get it on your foot, get it on your shoe, do some proper testing, do some really long distance work in it, and actually see that last week, my legs felt as fresh as they've ever felt after one of the highest volume weeks that I've ever ran. After that two and a half hour long run, I was able to carry on my day as normal Normal, not walk around like John Wayne and not walk around like with my, with shaky legs or feeling really tired. I just didn't. And especially on the double threshold day, uh, my legs felt great by the time the K reps came around after the morning workout, hence why I ran way too quick. I felt way too fresh. I felt way too good. And even after that, I still felt really, really good. And I do feel that this shoe offers exactly what Nike are trying to market it as. This is a training partner to the Vaporfly. You are not gonna get the Vaporfly magic in this shoe. You're not gonna get the lightweight, snappy responsiveness of the Vaporfly, but you're gonna get that same similar smooth ride feeling. You're gonna get that good recovery from the shoe because the foam and the plate is there to aid and help you. And I do feel like it really has been misunderstood. That doesn't necessarily mean though that I'm gonna let this shoe off the hook for being as heavy as it is because it shouldn't be as heavy as this. It should be, in my size, I'd be happy with something around 330, 340, even 350. I mean, it's still a little bit, you know, it would be lovely if it was lighter, but I wouldn't complain too much if it was around that mark. It would be a really big step forward if the Zoom 5 6 or 7 could get down to that weight, it would be great. But here's the thing, so many shoes have followed this trend this year. Let me give you an example of what I mean. Stability has become such a massive feature in a lot of shoes this year. The width of shoes has become massive. You've seen my Alpha Fly 2 videos. You'll see what they've done with that shoe. They're making companies in general are making shoes much more universally friendly for so many more runners. We've only got to look at the new speeds that have uh, the nylon plate in them that now spans the width of the shoe so that you get more stability through the midfoot and the heel so that people that land in the midfoot and the heel aren't kind of feeling wobbly, feeling unstable. It's been designed now so that it can work 
for more for more types of foot strike runners. Similar to this and the width of this shoe, it's going to allow people to not feel quite so unstable in the shoe. Alpha Fly 2, as I just said, the width in the foot in the midfoot has been fixed. A lot of people with the Alpha Fly 1 felt that their arch overhung, and mine did as well, and it was causing a lot of issues to people. They fixed it. The Adios Pro 3, I haven't tested it, but I've heard a lot of reports that again they've made that shoe a little bit wider and a little bit more stable. This is a feature that a lot of shoe companies companies are, are doing this year now. I think what they did is they bought out some really incredible unique shoes two years ago and over the iterations they're realizing that they're getting this amazing feedback over here but there's so many people over here that can't test it because it doesn't quite work for them and so what they're now doing these shoe companies are going for the mass market and going well how can we take this incredibly niche shoe that we made and making it a little bit more universally universally friendly so that more people can enjoy our products what that means is for the people that enjoyed versions one and two they're going to struggle with these newer versions because they'll feel like they've taken some of that edge away. But what it does do is it opens it up to so many more people. So the companies are going to sell more shoes. Does that make sense? And that's exactly what's happened uh, in this range and in other Nike shoes and in other brand shoes. Just more stability features are coming into play so that they can become a little bit more mass marketable for everyone out there. So again, you've got to keep that in mind. Width of the shoes are just increasing, just adding a little bit more. And I feel it when I'm running, I feel stable in this shoe it feels good it certainly doesn't feel like it thins out in the midfoot and you really do have to stay on your toes to feel like you've got that stable feeling I really do feel like you can land anywhere in this shoe and in other shoes and feel relatively stable so there we go those are my thoughts on the zoom fly 5 as to why I think it is the most misunderstood shoe of the year I think people are making snap judgments I'd love to see so many people test this out for a little bit longer than just one run or two and just get some good miles in it because the recovery benefits that I'm finding from this shoe are fantastic and when I'm logging really really high miles that is a massive factor for me and I do apologize I went off on a bit of a tangent in that previous clip but that was really just to kind of explain to you why a lot of these shoes are bulking out and it's something that a lot of companies are doing we've just got to accept it and uh, if we don't like what they're doing we've just got to stock up on the previous versions like for me I definitely want to try and grab some Alpha Fly version ones as and when I can find those on sale because I much prefer to be honest with you the version one over the version two and that's just an example I'd love to hear your thoughts in the comments below Have have you persevered with the Zoom Fly 5? Have you put some good miles in it and how are you finding it from a recovery standpoint? I'd love to know if you're on my side of the coin where you absolutely love it or if you're on a lot of other people's side of the coin where you're not such a fan. I'd love to hear that in the comments below. Let's get that discussion going and uh, yeah, appreciate you sticking around for this one guys. If you enjoyed today's video, please do give it a like, share it with your friends, subscribe to the channel for weekly running content and as always, I will see you on the next one. Until then.